Hello, slow speed tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Pools of Darkness with me, Blue Ankylo. So, let's see. What I want to do right off the bat before I forget is I want to lower the speed a little bit. Because I realize um, maybe sometimes when I'm trying to rush and I go through the combat or the dialogue a little bit quick and not everyone can read or see what's happening. And um, I like to do that so we don't waste too much time. But on the other hand, you know, you guys should be able to see what's going on in the game. Don't want to totally lose track. So I'll slow it down a little bit. Hopefully this doesn't slow it down too much. I'm worried that, like, fireballs that kill a million enemies will slow it down. What I can do is there's a... There, in, in the DOSBox emulator, there's a, a command, Control f 12 which increases the, the cycle speed, which is, like, the emulator plays the CPU faster. And I can do that kind of at whim in the middle of a battle to slow or speed things up if I need to. All it should affect is, like, end of turn and spell animations and stuff. So if things, like, normally will run it at, the default is 3,000 cycles. You know, amazing 3 megahertz computer, I guess. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if it's 3 megahertz. 3,000 cycles could mean anything. I, I don't know how DOSBox emulates. But, um... What am I trying to say? But, um, when we're casting a big fireball or a bunch of turning, I can speed it up to like four or five thousand cycles and it'll zip through a little quicker. Anyway, that's, that was my thought. I wanted to get that out of the way at the beginning. I'm not planning on changing the difficulty yet. Um, so far random encounters have been kind of hit or miss, uh, against enemies with special abilities like level drain or insta death. They're bad, but against normal enemies, we could probably raise it up to champion because most like Earth Elementals, Fire Elementals, all that stuff was pretty weak, honestly, so nothing to worry about. Okay, anyway, with that covered, uh, it's time to go to our next adventure. And I don't know what it is yet, but, you know, we started down here, we cleared the Temple of Tear. We could go back if we wanted to heal up, although, you know, we can do that wherever we can in camp. And uh, we finished the Hill Giant camp, so clearly the next closest area is over this way, and I'll use the mouse. We found some monsters. Why don't you just talk to them? I'm sure they'll be friendly. They don't understand. And they leave you alone. What friendly monsters? They just don't understand the strange English human dialect, common tongue, so they just walk by. Very nice. A large farmhouse dominates a clearing in the forest. So I guess every now and then you don't have to be on a uh, animation. I don't know if this is random or just happens to be this square specifically. Sure. Wind gusts blow clouds of dust across the silent barnyard. This is just an overland mini map according to Gold to uh, Goldbox Companion. But we've got a map. I'm just shaking my head. All right. We got ambushed. Try not to die, anybody. Or even worse, get your levels stolen. So, what are we fighting against here? Skeletal dog. I'm gonna call it a skeleton dog. A vampire. A giant zombie. I guess the vampires are probably the most dangerous. And they're not that strong. Shinga, you're the paladin. You will have none of this. Paladins really hate undead enemies. More than usual. They don't seem to be terribly impressive. Uh, I'll just punch the dog in the back. Alright, vampire came after fella. He missed, so now he dies. I love it that we're getting double attacks all the time now. So much better. Took a long time to get to this point. And uh, I'm not gonna fight that. What do you guys think? Who do you think I am? Okay, now that it's had its turn. All right, new new turn. Now I'll attack. <laughs> All right, that wasn't too bad. Just fight some vampires and some skeletons. Oh, it's probably worthless. Just leave it. It's from the, uh, the Vampire Thief. Nah, it's fine. Alright, well, if that's how this is gonna go down, um... 
let's cast a little bit of protection magic. It doesn't seem like it's going to be that strong, so I'm not going to worry about blessing and stuff. But prayer lasts a while. Protection from evil lasts quite a while. And uh, we'll leave it at that for now. Yeah, see? Look at this. Oh, that's a lot. But, you know, a lot of weaklings. In this situation, turning should work really well. And if, in case adjacency matters, move close. It seems to target the highest level enemies first, and then switch to the weaker ones. What if that wall is protecting the specter? It actually might have been, like, maybe turn his line of sight. Could be. No trouble. So, we had some... Oh man, there's a lot of rooms to check here. Vampires protecting their coffins. Quite a lot of vampires. One vampire mage, so we should maybe... Two vampire mages. Should maybe work on getting rid of them quickly. Um, I don't want to go, like, overboard on the magic here, because this stuff seems pretty easy. I probably could just turn even the vampire mages. I would not be surprised. But the main thing is to prevent them from getting any spells, so... Alright, go for it. Turning makes them run away, it's fine. That's fine. Again, I don't care that much. Oh, a little bit of garbage loot. Congratulations! Experience! Pixel! You know what? Because I'm a nice guy. Enjoy Mage level 15. I think that's the one that I just got as Blue Anculo, the Cleric Mage. It wasn't a great level up for Mages. I think the next one is going to be better. Um, you destroy the coffins. One small blot of evil has been destroyed. Well, that's a good start. Um, but yeah, I think it's level 16 mage is going to get uh, another delayed blast fireball charge. And that's what we really want. Alright. Um, how many coffins is there? Maybe you just have to clear out the coffins and then this, this building is uh, no longer infested, maybe? Alright, well, let's go maybe clear out this other building. Uh, Alright, it's just empty. Is that literally all that was in this area? Huh. So you just had to go into the farmhouse, destroy some coffins, and then everything's good. Alright, that was a very, very small adventure. All right, well, we did a, a, we did the large farmhouse. Good for us. This is where we really wanted to go. To the stockade, manned by giants and ogres. Apparently, it's Tay Dome's Keep, according to Goldbox Companion. Giants surround you. One speaks in a monotone. Kimar does not welcome intruders. Uh... I'm not an intruder, I'm a friend. Unfortunate, a good fight has two willing parties. An ogre locks the gate. The glassy-eyed giant intones. Kimar something something, doesn't matter, we're just going to kill them all. Cloud giants are fun though. Cloud giant shamans. So the shamans might have magic. They might be like... Priests or cleric style. We'll see. I'm usually not too afraid of giants, though. Especially when you got Fella. And Shinga. Don't, don't get Shinga down. He does a lot of damage. Oh, yeah. The Cloud Giants, if I remember correctly, they get, like, a free lightning bolt attack or something like that. They just automatically can toss lightning bolts or something similar. So you should always focus them down quick. I think they do, anyway. <laughs> Ogres are not very strong. 
Maybe the Cloud Giants don't get free attacks in this one. I don't know. Maybe I'm mistaken anyway. Oh, the Shaman's cast magic. Okay. Oh, come on, Pixel! That was garbage. Level are we that we get paralyzed from one holds person. It's a level 2 cleric spell, and it just basically one-shot one of our guys. Alright. We got this. We're fine. I just might be a little bit angry. And when I'm angry, Christina knows what to do. Stupid shamans. Shinga, revenge. Okay, there's only a couple shamans left. Alright, I know what to do. I got this. I don't have resurrection! What's going on? That's fine. Raised it, it'll be fine. Wait, what? Is it non combat? Okay, I thought you could cast that. I guess you can't. If someone's dead, you can't do anything. We'll bandage him so he stops bleeding out. Paralyzed is just so overpowered in these first edition games. Maybe now that he's not bleeding out? Camp only, yeah, of course. I just couldn't read it quick enough. Well, that's annoying. Sorry, Pixel, but, uh, not a great day for you. Alright, Shaman's dealt with. I think Fella needs to get to level 15 Ranger before he gets double attacks every turn. Something we need. Because, uh, he sure does a lot of damage to these enemies. Alright, so don't underestimate the lowly ogre shaman. They can still paralyze a character and then they immediately die, of course. That sucks. Alright, what do you think? Anything worth taking home? It's probably magical. Let's cast Detect Magic. Uh, we should share the jewelry. And yeah, I mean, we'll have a look at this stuff. I will, of course, handle the mage scrolls. Don't worry about it. The giant's eyes clear for a moment, and it whispers, Free! and dies. The key was destroyed in the fight. Wait, what key? It was talking about something about a key before we murdered it. Um, alright, hold up. We're going to go with, uh, Fella. We could do Resurrection, but... I'm figuring, for now, we've got lots of heals. Raise dead will be fine. And in fact, if you can't if you can't use resurrection... Well, I don't know yet. But if you could only use resurrection from the camp, then there's really no point memorizing the spell, because raise dead plus a heal spell are lower level, and you'll get more charges of them anyway, so why bother? You only need that full heal instantly, if you're uh, in the middle of combat, so... Anyway. Sorry about that, and, uh... Pixel, yeah, we'll... We'll straighten up that constitution. He must have had... I thought only one person had 19 con. Did he not lose constitution this time? I'll have to check my records, but I thought I only had my, uh, paladin with 19 con. There was a book in the first game that raised it. I don't think there's been any other way to raise constitution. It's very, very rare that there's a way in-game to raise your stats, your attributes. Very rare. Hmm. I'm pretty sure raise dead is supposed to cost you a constitution. Alright, anyway, giants. Um, well, that was... That shouldn't have been a difficult fight, but... Uh, turned out... It was a little bit harder than I expected. That's what... You know what. You know the joke. Alright. 
I don't actually even know if Cloud Giants are considered evil. They're probably, uh, like, neutral or something, actually. A battle between a mage and two gold dragons. Should I have looked at it closer? By looking, I've completely worn out my prayer and uh, most of my protection. Oh, hey. Well, <laughs> that's what I get. Alright, so... Cloud Giant Mages and Shamans. Okay, fine. You know what? If you want to play like that... Bella really wants this Blade Barrier to work. He's going to move a little bit closer. And he's going to Blade Barrier this hallway to death. By pressing the wrong button. Casting. And then, uh, Christiana... Having seen her friends die to cheapskate low-level cleric magic, she's immediately going to fireball the mages and clerics so they don't even get to do a thing. There shall be no enemy spell casting on her watch. Oh, might not have been the best spell. It won't work on the fire giants. Pretty good damage, though. Alright, and then blue, well... Oh, you know, this is actually a pretty good cone of cold. I could have moved a little bit closer there, to be fair. Alright. Oh, I... <laughs> I moved Shinka right in the way, of course. Sorry, Shinka. It's nice that the cone... Did you guys notice that? Um, other than hitting Shinka friendly fire. Sorry, friend. I had to have you guarding me, so that's just the way it is. Um, it actually, like, I targeted it here, and it hit all the way back to this square. The cone is really weird to figure out how it works. Like, it's a, it's a friggin' mystery. Why does that spell never do what I want it to do? Because once there's... Once they're on the ground... The enemy will almost always just walk around stuff like that. So it might as well just be a stinking cloud that the enemy just avoid. Because they'll never walk into it to take damage. Unless you can, like, put it behind them and then force them to flee with fear or something. Yeah, I mean, they're dead. So this is pretty standard. Giants tend to give good experience. They also tend to give you a ton of money. Not as much as the previous games. I remember, was it the first game? Every time you fought fire giants, they dropped like 10,000 platinum or something. You could never even carry it. Uh, I guess we could... Uh, we'll take it and identify it later. It's fine. It's probably not very good. Now nah, you can leave the money. Oops. Another patrol. I wonder how many patrols you have to fight before they stop hitting you with patrols. Alright, so we want to kill the shaman. Or at least make sure he can't cast magic. And I'm going to work on the mage myself. Mage versus mage. I just want to do a little bit of melee just to see... If these enemies have any chance against us in uh, 1v1 combat, you know. And I think we probably, given that we've been fighting these enemies since either Pool of Radiance and um, Curse of the Azure Bonds, you know, we should be way stronger than them by now. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure there was Fire Giants in that first game, so... If we could beat them at level 6 or 7, we better be able to beat them at level 15 or 18. And I mean, beat them senseless without even needing to use magic. Yeah, still 
not amazing gold or experience, but it's probably worth the fight. We'll take the short bow. It's probably terrible, but it's kind of, it looks unique, so I want to check. I wonder if this outside path just constantly fights uh, patrols and this is just like a extra, oh. Okay, so dead end. Never mind. I had to try to look there at the end, but... Alright, just dead end. Cool. I'm glad we just wasted my time. Why not? Could be something here. Huh. Alright. You find a scribbled note, yet it had not been there a moment ago. I only went back in here because Goldbox's companion cheated and showed me there was a door. But we had been in this room before. Do not search out secret passages. I shall contact you via these notes. I'm searching out secret passages. I don't care. I would have not known to check the left wall immediately. But if I had seen that note without the map, I would have been like bump into all the walls. I was already bumping into some walls, and that would have been like bump into every wall now. Alright, what have we got? Mage, Shaman, a uh, bunch of trash. Okay, the problem is that the Mages and the Shaman are uh, guarded by some good front rows, so... Probably pull off a reasonable lightning bolt. Let me just look at the landscape here. If I cast a lightning bolt here, one, two, three, four, five, possibly six, seven, eight at max. Uh, I think lightning bolt works different in tabletop than it does in the console, in the, the computer game. I think for us, it just goes between four and eight tiles randomly. But I think originally you could kind of control it, and it actually had a longer range based on how far away from the caster you charged it. Like. If you just targeted a couple squares away, it only went a couple squares. But if you cast it at maximum range, it actually travels much longer. But I don't think it works like that in this game, unfortunately. Because that'd be really cool. Also, I believe I read that originally you could fork the lightning bolt and have it split into two lightning bolts that hit uh, targets beside each other kind of thing. Which is really neat. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so what do we do then? Uh... Well, this actually might not be a bad stinking cloud. So all we need to do is make sure they can't ca- Ah! Oh, stinking cloud! It stinks! I can't target the square I needed to target. Uh... Coughing should mean no casting. Choking means dead. Alright, me... Well, as long as we get a little bit of damage in here... No magic for you. Alright, and then Rodica, you can start to work on these uh, normal giants. Nothing to worry about. And Fella is going to work on the fire giant. Yeah. Oh, by the way, sucks to be you. Stinking Cloud is still a really good spell. Clearly. Alright, I'll go fight the mage. You wanna fight me? Still coughing, and I believe coughing means minus two air, uh, ACs, I believe. That's so much damage. We just did 73 damage. Alright. That was fun. Good fight. Um. Leave the money, it's just not worth it. I I guess I should identify. The next time we fight a patrol, I'll identify just so we can check if any of the stuff I'm picking up is worth it. Kind of weird. I wouldn't have known about this wall either. You just have to be checking all the walls now. Kimar used Taedom's spell to control the ogres and giants. The note fades away. See, now, it did say that I'm not supposed to be uh, checking for secrets, but that generally means you should be. The shelves of Tatum's library are empty. Ooh. 
rusty tomes on giants lie scattered about. Can I gather some in secret information that makes me stronger against giants? Alright, another patrol. We're going to be fighting a lot of these for the looks of it. A lot of times in the first game, Pool of Radiance, uh, once you fought 10 random battles in an area, they stopped. I'll see if there's anything like that. This is like number four. All right, kill these guys. Ah, uh, I'll be fine. We're mostly just cutting right through them right now. Fella is our last fighter to not get two attacks per round. So he needs to hurry up and get that level up. Okay, detect magic and take items. Oh, the trident is not even magic. <laughs> All this stuff I've been picking up, it's not even magical, is it? It's... <laughs> Uh, you got me, game. I was trying to save on detect magic spells. Total waste. <laughs> Alright, good stuff. Good joke. Good joke. Go southern door first. Could be secrets anywhere. A ragged man emerges from hiding. I am Ruln, one of Lady Sasha's guards. His words tumble out. All right, journal entry 91. Let's do it. Journal 91. Engage. Ruln's story. We encountered citizens in the wilderness, speaking of horrors happening throughout the land. Council member Sasha. Oh, yeah, that's right. The one we were supposed to go on a trip with. I forgot about her. Oops, again. She used to be a city clerk, apparently. Someone on the team remembered her. I don't know what they're talking about. <clears throat> um, uh, Sasha told them she would not detour from her task, but some joined us to follow the Flan banner. We met many ogres and giants in Thar, and our party was less than a dozen when we reached Tadom's keep. We were ambushed in the library by two mages, Quill and Kimar. They came out of nowhere. I think they must have found secret passages in the keep. We were captured, but I managed to elude my guards. I fear I cannot retrace my steps. I am weak, but will give you what aid I can. Maybe we'll find Sasha in here. That's cool. We can rescue her again. I'm pretty sure we rescued her a few times in uh, Secret of the Silver Blades. Just kill him? <laughs> oh man! Shinga! <laughs> How is this even an option? This poor guy. I guess it could be a trick, right? Like, who else have we met in here who is alive, not a superhero, and actually on our side? You know, he, he could be a double agent. And we could strike him down and save the party. But that's pretty heartless. Shinga, just keep an eye on him. The library is to the east. Well, I was already there. Let's go to the library with this guy. Uh, shamans again over there if I can get to them. Cut them down! Alright, well let's just, uh, you know, we don't use magic missiles that often. We just use this to cut through, make sure the shaman can't use hold person, and then we should be fine. Because we should chop through these guys pretty quick. They're not. These guys have pretty low HP. Also, fella, you know, he's pretty good at doing this job. No 
little magic. Don't let the shaman get anything. Alright. And, and, I mean, that site kind of proved there a few battles ago where Pixel died. I, I hope that helps explain why I'm so... Like, nervous with letting shamans, clerics, mages, anything get even a single spell off. You wouldn't think that one spell could wreck you, but that seems to be how first edition works, you know? One unlucky hold person spell and your party is basically dead. Like, I mean, they could they could hold four people in one turn and then just kill them all instantly, so. Is this guy gonna do anything for us in here? I kind of thought we should bring him back. We don't know about that secret. Don't, we don't know about it. All right, another scribbled note. Beware of Kimar's trap. Well, thanks. That's really helpful. Don't tell me what the trap is. Just tell me there is a trap. I love it when you do stuff like that. Well, let's check the other... We're going to get a lot of patrols, aren't we? We got ogres. Ooh, even weaker. Yeah, the ogres are like... Even weaker than hill giants. Not that impressive. You missed? Fella. You're supposed to be strong against these guys. I feel like this is lightning bolt territory. Be nice to hit the mage. Just cast it here, see what happens. Oh yeah. Really good. Excellent lightning bolt. It didn't bounce back as much, but uh, that's fine. Oops. <laughs> I like how easy it is to accidentally hit your friends. I mean, there's always been friendly fire with fireballs and all that, but just move into them and the game's like, are you sure you want to kill your friend? At least one programmer must have had the great idea to be like, you know what, we should put a confirmation on that. Instead of just free attacking instantly. Alright. I wanted to check these side passages. Lots of tapestries about mages and two gold dragons. So... Alright. He has bargained with evil for immunity from my magic. So, are these notes that the gold dragons are leading us? Council member Sasha will be safe. Okay, I'm just following my auto map because this is just so much easier. I'm confused. Come on, we, we must be running out of patrols to kill by now, right? Oops. I got it. Don't worry, guys. Blue Inky to the rescue. Mage not ma casting magic. Ever again. Another patrol dealt with. It's not getting old, don't worry, it's totally fresh. It's cool. I am not getting tired of fighting the same group of enemies every step. No, you can't tell by my liberal use of fireball how tired I am of a certain enemy group. That's totally not how it works. Forty-one damage. I love seeing huge numbers. It's just a an old video game thing. When I was playing old games as a kid, I always had like a, a running 
record kind of thing, whoever had the highest possible damage. And I'd sort of keep track of stuff like that, like, yeah, you've dealt 100 damage in a single blow, you're my new hero. And then someone else would beat them and do like 120 damage. You're like, yeah, you're the new rec hero, record holder. I don't know. Did you guys do anything like that as a kid? Or as an adult? Are you doing it right now? Please do. Please tell me. Alright, another dead end. Both the sides were dead ends. Yeah, yeah. It's a couple, uh, shamans over here. I should have interrupted that other one. Uh, the chances are it's gonna cast hold person again, you know. Now it can't. awesome that even your mage, the mage, you know, cleric mage to be fair, um, is able to 1v1 a hill giant, you know. One of the things I remember kind of that's interesting about first edition rules for Dungeons and Dragons is um, the level scaling is set such that um, technically a level 10 character is supposed to be like demigod level strength, like strong enough to fight like, in the game's world, literal gods, nearly. And the concept of being like a level 19 paladin was never really encapsulated in first edition rules. Like, Shinga is such a high level, he'd be insanely like, like, king of a giant, enormous kingdom or something kind of thing. Although paladins probably wouldn't be kings, but you know, he'd he would, uh, he'd be so highly ranked, like, he'd basically run the Temple of Tear for all of the lands or something, I don't know. It's something like that in the old games. In the old first edition rules, that is. It wasn't until, I think, third edition that they kind of toned it down a bit more. Maybe even second edition, but, like, eventually they, like, rebalanced it so that level 20 was more like Demigod. And I think in 3rd edition it might even be higher than that, actually. It might be level 30. Because you can get to pretty high levels in those, uh, in those later rule sets. And they started adding, like, meta feats for, uh, or what are they called? Not meta feats, uh, well, there's feats in general, but there was something else for, like, epic feats or something like that. Someone can correct me the exact name, but... You needed to be level 20 to even learn them in the first place. So they started putting more content in for really high level groups. Um, in these old games, ah, there's not much content. The best you can do is you get a few new spells at level 15, 17, and so on. Alright. So Shinga took a big hit there. One of the Cloud Giants definitely dealt some damage. They must have a pretty low chance to hit him, but uh, when they do connect, it's, uh, it's, you know, they're not doing two damage anyway. I like to have everyone in the green zone, though. There we go. Oh, yeah, I suppose we might as well save. It's been a while. All right, let's keep going. I guess we're already 38 minutes in. Feels like I've done nothing this episode other than fight groups of giants. Alright, let's check the west. Two flan guards are chained here! The ogre guards attack. Guards... <sighs> These guys are dead. You know what? Quick. Oh, quick is just for them. Right! You have to turn everyone on to quick mode. And then they start using their items. That's right. 
Well, long bows are fine when I don't have to re-equip them every time. Yeah, that, like, that fight wasn't even worth thinking about. One guard is dead, but the other still breathes. Rolm says, The live one is Bostel, one of Sasha's personal guards. Break his chains. I must rest here. In my condition, I would only slow you down. Find Sasha. I'll try. Oh, the dead guard remains? Oh, I didn't read it. I wasn't expecting dialogue. Sorry. Giants are seated at a stone table, gnawing haunches of meat. One looks up and snarls. He avoids Roland's gaze. Wait a second. Our will is enslaved to Kimar. Leave before we must kill you. Okay, guys. I don't trust Roland. Remember when I was like, why would you ever kill him? And then I'm like, conspiracy theory. And then now I'm like, wait. Why are these giants not looking at Rome? Is he... No, he's avoiding Rome's gaze. I was thinking, maybe he's invisible to giants. That's how he survived. He's got a ring of giants can't see me. But if he's... This is like, there's like a social interaction here. Roland walked in behind us and glared at this guy. And he's like nervously avoiding Roland's eyes. I think Roland is controlling the giants. He's uh, the mage that's up to no good. And there's a different mage somewhere that's a pretty cool sprite for uh, the Shaman. There's another mage somewhere that's like leaving us notes to help us. But it's not Roan, probably. I might be able to do a good cone of cold here, actually. I'm gonna stand here and uh, see if I can get a good cone. Don't want to accidentally hit Christiana. All oh, right, of course, because she was on quick mode, the game's auto switched her over. Yeah. Yeah. We know Cone of Cold isn't gonna go that far north, so we'll put a fighter up here anyway. All right, so we can s cast it that far. There's really no way it's gonna hit Christiana this way, I don't think. Ooh, lots of damage. I mean, it's different than a lightning bolt, but it worked pretty well. The more I get used to it, the more I like Cone of Cold. Alright, that was fun. Some spells, the more I use them, the more I think they're useless. Cone, though, is kind of the opposite. It's difficult to use, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty good. Alright. Roll. What's going on, by the way? Why were these giants not looking at you in the eye? A man looks up from stirring a pot. More visitors to Te Dome's keep. The poor giants are caught by my master's spell again. History repeats. Remember to distrust Kimar. Is Kimar Roan? Fades away. What is going on? You got like illusionary old men now. There's a lot of illusionary passages around here as well. Where does this take us? Time has sealed this door. You mean it's rusted shut. Like, over time, the door rusted and no one fixed it. Rome pauses and he shakes his head. There is no point in going east. I have explored there thoroughly. We're going east, sir. As soon as I fill in the map. Um, we're getting pretty close to the end of the episode, but we're going east. Lines mark the floor of this abandoned training hall. Okay. 
but I really want to go east. You son of a gun! Roland claps and monsters materialize. I have resisted slaying you in the hopes you would find my enemy, Quill. I am Kimar, and you are I should have saved it and buffed up. Well, what do you think? Do you think his giants have any chance against us? Ah, this is nothing. These guys, we fought like drow mages that were immune to magic. This is nothing. Consider yourself interrupted. Now, let's look over here. I'd like to interrupt the mage, so let's go up to here. And seeing as I was just extolling the virtues of Cone of Cold, let's do that. Anything that can do like 50 to 60 damage without the enemy saving is in the good books. It's in the good books. No shamans allowed. Alright. That wasn't bad. Alright. So, roll, Raul, whatever we call you. I'm on to your tricks. So his... Clearly... His uh, sanctuary is to the east. Probably the other mage that we're looking for is to the west. But uh, we'll have to deal with that next episode. So thanks for watching, folks. We've cracked some of the mystery of this dungeon. And we'll try to solve the rest of it next time. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you there next episode.